Okay, so before um, doing something more practical than, than this, let me say two more things about components and element. Uh, we can skip this. So uh, I, I already told you that elements are plain object describing uh, a component instance or a DOM node and its properties. So an element uh, is always a representation of a DOM element, a DOM HTML element in the virtual DOM of React. And it contains information about the component type, H1, button, whatever, its properties, any props that it, has, it needs to have, and any child element inside of it. Maybe you have a navbar with inside another element that is a button, that with inside another things, etc. It's not an instance of a page, but a description, because JSX is declarative. It's a description of how to build something in a component. And when we create an element with the tags or with the code, this is the code that represents, the, that is the same text that will generate when we write tag component name, minor component name major. We have three things to define for an element. The type, the component, div, button, etc. Any props that we need to pass that are objects, typically JavaScript objects. Um, that are represented of object properties, always with the exception of the reserve and as a map with the uh, DOM properties, the HTML properties, with exception to the reserved word. So the class property in uh, HTML becomes class name in React because class is a reserved word. And for clearly is is a reserved word in JavaScript and becomes HTML4. But when there is no clash of naming, it's just the name that you will use in HTML uh, as a property. And then you can have children that are React node. It could be the text of a P uh, of a paragraph. It could be another element if you need to build a chain. It could be an array of elements or nodes, etc. And I told you that by convention, DOM elements are always lowercase and components are always uppercase. And you clearly can combine them. You can use uh, a components that renders the returns and elements, etc. And I told you that we are going to use JSX, that is a way to write the same things that you can write in JavaScript. But instead of specifying in the create element the type, the props, and the children, you define the type as a tag, the props as props, property, like HTML, property, HTML-like property, and the children are the things that are contained within the tag. Uh, and then, during the rendering in the browser, components are expanded to the default HTML elements accordingly. Uh, well, the JSX syntax is similar to the HTML. You can use tags with minor and major, and sometimes it uh, encloses in open in parentheses for clarity, but it's not mandatory. If you want to just say that a um, JSX element is uh, to be stored in a variable, you can put it in, in parentheses for clarity, but it doesn't change. And clearly, since this is JSX is just JavaScript in the end, it can be used wherever you can use any other variable, function, etc. in JavaScript. Because it's so you can assign it to a variable if you want, hmm? because it's actually JavaScript. Um, um, and if you... Uh, as, as in HTML, if the uh, element has no children, you can use the uh, slash minor tag for slash major, major tag for closing the, uh, the tag. So instead of writing div and slash div, you can just write slash uh, 
um, a major for closing the tag immediately. Um, clearly, before using a component, you need to import it if it's not defined in that file. Mm -hmm. So if it's a component defined by Bootstrap, you have to import Bootstrap before using it, otherwise Java, uh, React will give you an error, an empty page or an error page in the browser. And tag attributes are always converted to props in React elements. Mm -hmm. So strings, color equal blue, become string values props, where color is the key and blue and the value. And other objects can be also specified as JavaScript expression, uh, expression like shadow size equal to written in this way, that will still become a, a, a props with a key and a value. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also have like things like true or warning level triple equal deba debug question mark gray. So you can also have expression mm, to compute the value of a props. So not only the string like blue uh, or the number like two, but also something that need be evaluated as JavaScript ex expression. Any JavaScript expression is accepted as uh, elements of a property in a JSX tag. And any children you have, like hello world within a component, is passed to a spe special props that is called props.children. So in props.children, you find any, all the children that you pass to that specific um, JSX element. So props are passed here as elements, but if you have children, you can get it from props.children and you get all the children that you have, if needed. Um, since all of this is JavaScript, you can also specify conditionally which components you want. So you can say, I have a list and if the user, if this property is this variable logged in is true, then render the component user menu. Otherwise, render the component login link. So this is totally legit and it's conditional because this is JavaScript in the end. So you can have a JSX inside JavaScript that is inside the JSX that is inside JavaScript. All of this is totally legit because JSX is a subset of JavaScript. So it's, it's still possible to do that. Um, keep in mind that undefined null and Boolean values are not rendered. You can use it to define if something is true or not, but the results of that expression is not rendered. So it can be useful for conditional including children. So if user level is admin, then render admin menu. The first things will be true or false, and that will not be rendered, but the results of the operation, uh, imagining that this render admin menu will generate a component, is, is, is actually uh, executed. Um, what else? So I already said, and... Uh, well, some attributes in HTML doesn't have a value, like selected or disabled. Mm? So, in HTML, you know, some elements, uh, some attributes have an element uh, as a value, mm, class equal, ID equal, href equal, they must have a value, other doesn't, selected, disabled, etc. In JSX, all of them can have a value and typically have, it's not mandatory, but typically have. So selected, for instance, can have a true or false, and disabled can have a true or false. Hmm? Uh, in absence of attribute, is considered um, false or, or nothing. Hmm? But typically is optional, all of this. Hmm? But again, it's one of the things that React did for creating some more uniformity in the thing that is doing. So since some attributes can have a value and other don't, uh, React said, well, all the attributes potentially can have a value. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of saying select doesn't and hrfs. Uh, there is no comment in JSX. Mm -hmm. So if you want, and the uh, HTML syntax is not working, so if you want to add a comment, so you have to create an expression, a JavaScript expression, and insert it a comment in JavaScript. 
it's ugly as written here but that's the reality so no comments explicitly in JSX, no specific way to define comments the uh, html syntax is not working for comments the only way to create a comment is open a, JS a javascript expression and create a comment in javascript hmm? if you want um, when passing props to a DOM native node, there are some differences with respect to uh, HTML. For instance, the on change, on click, etc., in HTML that are typically written without any capital letter become on change with the capital C. Mm -hmm. um, so, in a camel case format. Um, the style attribute, if you want to pass directly a style, accept not a string but an object. So you have to write something like this if you want to pass the color white in a style of a div where the div is clearly a, a React element. Um, all these CSS objects and properties are camel case. So margin minus top becomes margin top with a capital T. So everything that has a minus, it's uniform in camel case. Um, and object values are CSS value as strings. And there is also a spread syntax that can be used in uh, JSX that is a shortcut for passing all the properties of an object as props. Instead of listing all the properties, welcome.message, welcome.recipient, welcome.whatever, you can write three dots welcome and it will pass all the properties of welcome as uh, the equivalent properties. So if welcome as MSG uh, value, it will give, uh, will give you a props that's called MSG, etc. Um, okay, this is just a reminder that uh, whatever it's, it was written uh, before, oh well, HTML entities may not be supported directly in older JSX. So <clears throat> all the e commercial E E copy, E star, etc. Maybe not be supported, but you can use Unicode value if you want because JavaScript supports Unicode and so JSX supports Unicode. So you can use directly star as a string or copyright symbol as a string or any emoji that you want directly in the code. Um, okay, this is something we are going to, to see directly. So. Um, Oh, let me say just things about these things about components. So you, there is no a strict rule on how big the component should be. You should have a table as a component or each row of a table as a component. Within a bigger component is the table. There's no strict rule. It's normal in React to have small components like rows in a table as a component for reusability of the component in a different component. So children components in this way can be reused in other parents' components, if you want. So it's normal to create small components for reusability, but it's not a strict rule that you should have all the components, small components, or all big components. It's a criteria of design of the software or the application. Uh, but again, in general, it's uh, made by small components so that it's reusable parts. Mm? So the, a, a good component is one that you can ideally reuse in another uh, application. Mm? So a row on a table can be something that you want to reuse in another table. Mm? Maybe it has some properties that are useful for you, uh, but instead other things could be, instead not make sense to, to split because they are uh, not really uh, reusable in other places. So if it's reusable, it could make sense to, to make it a component. But again, it's not an independent component. But again, it's not a strict rule, just a rule of thumb. And one thing instead that is fundamental uh, in React is the key uh, attribute. So every time you have a list or a collection of a set, something that should be rendered in a list format and specifically when you have UL, LI, etc., you must assign a unique key to each element like key equal something 
Why? Because the React uses the key attribute to understand if that list is still the same or it has been changed. It's an internal mechanism in which the key must be unique within the list that React uses, again, to understand if the elements in the list have been changed or not. If you don't put a key, or you put a key always the same within a list, you can have unpredictable behavior in the page when you are going to change that list. Because the React is not able, in most cases, to understand if you move something, if you rewrite something, if you add something, because it has no reference to understand that. So for every list that you create, a key attribute is mandatory and it should be unique within that list. It does, doesn't, need, doesn't need to be unique in the page or in the application, just in that list. So you can use the same key for another list, but not within the same list. And the key should be something that is unique, specific to that uh, list. So it could be an ID, it could be a code, it could be something that, again, is, is unique to, um, to the list. You don't have access in the code to that key. You specify that key, like key equal, but you don't have access in the children of the key. It's just used for React purpose. It doesn't have a usage in your own code. You cannot even access to that. It's not passed through uh, a children like a props. It's just used for React. Again, if you don't put it, and I've seen too many exams without the key, you can have, well, first of all, React will give you a warning, so you, you know if you are missing a key in the browser console. Um, and if it's just read only the list, you will never add remove things then it's a warning, you shouldn't do this, but nothing bad happened. But if you need to move things in that list, or add things from that list, or delete things, so you need to manipulate that list, not having a key or not having a unique key can, in some cases, generate unpredictable uh, behaviors, like you add an element and this element is added twice, or is not added, it's not rendered, because in the code it's actually added, it's just not rendered or it's rendered twice, or it's rendered in a different order than you expected. So just unpredictable behavior, because the React is not able to understand if you, if you changed or not that list. So the key attribute is fundamental when you are uh, defining something that needs to be listed. And finally, um, a component should always, must always return one root element in the return uh, in the return option of the function so if you have more than one elements returned you have to put them together and if you you have to have a container that contains everything that you want to return uh, like a d a div if you don't want to specify a div a p a specific element you can use a react fragment that is written just with minor and major, just without anything in it. And this will be useful for React to understand that you are trying to put together and give one singular root to the return of the function, but it will not be rendered in HTML, just will be skipped. It's just something for React to know that this is the root element of everything that keeps the entire component together, the rendered part of the component together. So you always need one main elements container when you do return of a container. Okay, and with this, let's try to see this in practice. So, uh, well, the exercise say to create a React application and to create the web page that we had uh, in the last two weeks, the heap overrun, um, page with the one question and the answer. So let's start at least creating that. So the first things that we need to do, uh, do you see it's big enough? Yes. It's to create the application. Hmm? So uh, npm create byte 
at latest. Um, and the name of application. So in our case, we can write React minus QA. And this will give you a menu of the framework libraries you want to use. And we're going to select React. And the slide says select JavaScript plus SWC. We have seen that in some computers is not um, is not working and I, I will investigate why but um, so I will select JavaScript plus SVC because it's working here but if it's not working to you just to redo the same process with selecting JavaScript just plain JavaScript and it's it's the same you lose a little bit of optimization but is is not a drama hmm? so either JavaScript plus SVC or just plain JavaScript and that's it. And, and uh, Vite gives you the instruction what to do. So enter in the folder. And you see that here we have the folder with the React project that is um, the one that we have seen in the slide. So we have app.jsx, main.jsx. And if we open main.jsx, we see that there is this create root with the get element by the root and then the render the app and the app is app.jsx where there is some code that we can we will change to personalize it this is just a boilerplate um, application that defines you see component app that define uh, one root element see one root element the div this one root element always returning in this case this div contains everything else and it's just code that is uh, starting from from the beginning so here it's a go in the folder react to QA and then npm install as a reminder npm i is a shortcut for npm install and if you have internet it's just downloaded oh it's a problem today then because yesterday it worked in my, on my computer so so today it have a problem is the they updated tonight basically okay so let's do it again so this is another you know nice things about libraries that they change and they change from today to tonight so let's do it again but let's select javascript instead of JavaScript plus SVC. So it's not working probably for everybody. So just select JavaScript and then NPM install. Then um, it download everything. These everything create a JavaScript package lock and node modules like any other JavaScript application and if you now do npm run dev it launches a website to localhost 5173 so if we go to localhost 5173 we see the default application boilerplate that just built and say edit app.jsx to, to work on your application this is just the default boilerplate with the logos and a button here and if you click on the button on the logo you go on the website of react and vite and if you inspect the elements here well you you don't properly see but this is a plain html so you have div with another div inside with an h1 this is html and if you installed the, um, the, the inspector, you see that we have one component it's called app because everything else is um, HTML elements, hmm? the representation of HTML elements. And it has information like which is the source file. And if there is props, there are no props in this case. Uh, the state, in this case, there is a state. And 
which are the functions that rendered the, the app component. And if you have more components, you will see them here. Hmm? But in this case, there is just one, one component. And in the console, you will have any warning errors that React generates for you, including, for instance, if you don't set a key in a list, you will see a warning here. Or if you do some errors, maybe the page is, black, is white, but you see some errors in the browser console. So keep always a look at the browser console hmm, for errors. So this is the page. Hmm, clearly, is, is the boilerplate. What we want to do is to create a web page that is similar to the um, Heap hover run page. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, we can get it for a moment. No. We want to create, or at least to start creating, something like this. Right? So, an header? No. Not something like this, sorry. Wrong folder. Still wrong folder. Okay, something like this, mm. with a question and the table of answers. So something you that you did last last week, and two weeks ago. Mm. Just static information without interactivity, without anything. Just build this page. Okay. So the first question, and then we will start building something of this page. Mm. We will not. Be able to do all the page, I can give you the full code, but let's decide uh, which component do we have. The navbar nav is one component, okay. And we can call it navbar, navigation, etc. Then, okay. How many components do we have here? You, you say this part, no? How many components do we have here? It's one component that we call questions, and it has everything inside, or are, is one parent component with three children? One question one, one asked by, and one the actual questions. Smaller component, you say. A parent with three questions. Do you agree? Okay, in this case, it could also be one component. It could be also three, but one component also makes sense uh, because here, first of all, the things are strictly related one with the other, and it's difficult that you are going to reuse ask by on the uh, right of the page alone as a component. Mm -hmm. This three or question number, these things are really you know, strictly related to, to each other first and second, these are not very complicated components, right? This is a paragraph, this is a paragraph, and this is, was a paragraph, I think also. So these are three paragraphs. Mm -hmm. So could be three components, but could also be one because it's difficult to imagine a no, way to reuse these three components separately, given they are so very simple, like 3P. Uh, hmm? Then answers, well, answer would be one independent component probably because it's, it's a title, and then the table. How many components we can create on the table? One. Okay, which are so? First of all, we will have a table component, I think, right? The general table component. Then we have everything inside that, or we want a component for the rows, for instance. The rows. Okay, a component for the rows. Then we want a component for the. 
well, the, the header is st still a row. Um, the buttons, yes, we can have a components for the actions, for instance. Because now we have one button, but actually this is called actions, so we can possibly have more action. So in this current version is one, but we can have maybe two buttons. So it makes sense to have a components for representing the actions, for instance. And other things. Well, let's let's keep the last line. We won't we won't have the last line. Just the the filled in um, table. So we will have one bigger component for the table, one component for each row, and then one components for the actions. Since it's uh, there is a button, and it could be colors, it could be action connected to that button, it could be things, and then you can reuse if you want the button, for instance, in other places, and. Ideally, you can reuse the components of the row in another table. So it makes sense. And, and the table and the row is also complex because it has one cell here, one that is a date, one cell here, one cell here, that are that strings, and this, this is a number. So it's, it's, it's slightly more complicated than the question here. Okay? So we can create this, uh, let's say, one component here, Let's say one big component here for the question. Uh, let's say also that we create one big component that contains the table and the title, because they are actually connected together. The title answers is related to the table, is, is not separate. And then within we will have h1 or whatever it is, answer, h2, answer, and then the table that will be split in this, in this way. And then we can also have a footer component, right? Let's not forget the footer. A footer component that like navar would be one single component okay uh, so which one do you prefer to do we cannot do all the components in half an hour the table okay so let's go here we can keep this running we need to work in app.jsx hmm? so we need to delete all these things basically we can keep the function because it's the only things that we we actually need well and also the the return hmm? so we do an empty function with an empty return it's fine and we need to keep let me add just one thing to remove the error so our app will be like this at the beginning just a component called app that is called created by the main.jsx that will return something that will be our table and it will be exported because main.jsx needs to access this app to render it to import this app and notice that in index.js there is some java uh, css and also in app.css there is some css so i removed the import of the css but you can also empty the css file because otherwise things will be centered in the page and it's not something that we we want and also we want to use bootstrap so we need to install bootstrap so npm install react bootstrap react minus bootstrap and bootstrap also the same bootstrap that you were using manually copying and pasting uh, scripts and you can see that it's installed if you open again package.json this is the same as in the past in which you see that there is bootstrap as a dependency and react bootstrap as a dependency now hmm? uh, npm install react minus bootstrap and npm install bootstrap you can also put it in the same line
Okay, so um, first of all, what we need to create in the table? Be okay. Yes, we will need to create a container. But before creating the table on screen, what do we need? The information to put inside the table. Right? Where where we have the information? We don't. Do we need database or we... No, we don't have database here. This it's this is running in the browser, so it cannot access the database. Static data, but not inserted in. Uh, so we can, uh, if you have the. The code of last week, we can reuse the code of last week. The one that you created in class last week. So the answer construction function and the question construction function. Then not everything else, but these things here, yes. So let's copy this. And let's create a file within SRC and we can call it question answer models dot JavaScript and we can we can paste the same code we had last week so we have use strict the answer with DJS the two we don't need a two string anymore because we are in the browser so we don't have to string we can have add answer, get answer, and init for sure. Um, okay, to make this running, what we need? To install the JS. So npm install the JS. And now that we install the JS, we need to import it. So import DJS from DJS. Okay. A and this is basically the same code we had last week. Now, we need to access to probably question from app.jsx, right? We need to build our question with our answers there since the table will be started there so what we need to do here export, export. how can we export it so we, we have various methods uh, one is export default question hmm? that will export only the default export is question so since here we just need to export question that makes sense and it's in the end of the file so here in app we can import it hmm? so import question but it's actually whatever name you want to use it from and where is the file in this case QA model so and in this case we can create like a fake question uh, that's the same of the other time so new question uh, question add an ID a text of the question that is is JavaScript Let's use always the same, better than Python. And uh, the author, that was me. And a date in a string format, let's say February 07. 07. And then we can, we have an init method, you created an init method, so fake questions dot init. And this will create our fake information to put in the table. And clearly, at a certain point, we will have a server with a database, we'll get this information 
from an actual uh, source of data, not just from, from here. But right now we have the information. We have a fake question and, um, and a series of answers uh, related to it. Okay, then now we need a container. So in React Bootstrap, init is the function you created the, la the last time and just populate the answer oh. it's it's copy and paste from last week so init is just the function that is created by you hmm? uh, so we need a container and in react bootstrap we can see that the containers and you have documentation is aligned with Bootstrap 5 documentation, uh, you can see that containers are called container and rows are called row and columns are called call and etc. Mm. And you can have container fluid using the attribute fluid and so on. So again, like for Bootstrap, there is documentation to be understood. Uh, it's mostly aligned with the um, the bootstrap documentation and some things are brought here as a container as components other things are still in bootstrap so if you want to use a bootstrap class mt3 you can and its class name equal mt3 is not a property of a container so they brought some things as a container and other things are still in the plain bootstrap library uh, css library so we can use a container and uh, we need a row and we need a column hmm? and if we save these uh, and go here and refresh this you see well and run it uh, npm run dev and refresh it you see a wonderful white page and if you inspect the elements you see four errors uh, the first of which say container is not defined. And so th it's right. I mean, we, we have written container here, but what we are missing? Import. Hmm? So Visual Studio Code React doesn't tell you that you didn't have imported, but you have to remember it and you see it in, uh, in the browser. So here we need to import container raw call from React Bootstrap. And Visual Studio Code helps you in finding like React Bootstrap, etc. And if we go here, we still see an empty page because we don't have any content in it, but no error messages in the console. Okay, so we said that we need uh, a component that contains everything. So let's create a component in another file. So let's create a folder and let's call it components. And within the folder, let's create a answers component dot JSX. So here we need to import answers from components and answers let's call it answers component so that we remember that is container for components uh, components 
but just that just the name hmm? okay and then we imagine to have a component is called answer so here instead of the call um, actually no here instead of the row we will have answers as a component uh, answer answers as a component um, because we need to have the, the answer, semicolon, answer, colon, and the table hmm, in the component. So we just build a big component for, for that. And do we need to set, to pass any information to the table from here? The, the, the answers, yes, the, the answers, the questions. Uh, it, it's, it's not mandatory so what we are going to do now is create answer components that contains all the components related to the table and the, that part of the page uh, just for cleanness of the pay of, of the file otherwise here we will have everything here so it's it's a good practice to have components that are logical related in separate files but and, and you can also have one file per components if you want but if components are small it becomes a lot of files uh, so we need to pass uh, these as a props so we can have a props is called answers and we need to pass fake question dot get answers so we call the methods that will give us the array containing all the answers because in the table we just need the answers and nothing else we don't need the questions hmm? so we execute the function to get the answers okay now let's go here and let's create uh, so one more thing that we are missing here sorry it's no not here in app.js is to use bootstrap we need to import the CSS of Bootstrap. So import Bootstrap uh, CSS uh, this CSS the Bootstrap file Bootstrap dot min dot CSS because the React Bootstrap uses the CSS file, so we just need to import it as first thing before importing bootstrap react bootstrap the components that's again that's written in the slides and also in the documentation it's just one thing to, to remember um, and it's needed just in app once we have in app it's inherit let's say in the other components that start from apps okay the css so here we need to create a component how do we create a component? What is a component? A function. Function, the component we call was answers. And it has some props, it receives some props. So we can uh, write it in this way, which is the things that a component should, which is the things that a component should do return something and what this component will return uh, we also have the header right in theory the header answers and the table we said that we need also this So it we need to have a row for the um, header. So row with a column and here uh, answers. And this should be an uh, H2. 
So call as a H2 or call as anything is the equivalent of writing anything class equal call. So you write div class equal call or p class equal call. If you want to specify the element p, h2, whatever, you write call as equal the element you want to be rendered. By default, is div. In this case, we want an header of second level. If you look at the HTML of the other page, and so we, we need to render the same thing. And we need another row. Um, with the um, answer table that we need to create. And the answer table will receive, will need to have the props that we passed. So we call it in the same way and we write props.answers. And we need to create answer table. Clearly. Uh, so why it's everything red? Because we must return one single. Uh, because we must have one root element, and here we have two. We have two rows. We must return one thing, one container. So we can add a fragment. that will not be rendered in HTML, but will be enough for React to say, this is the container, this is the root element, a React fragment. And we need to import row, it's done. So here, if we go, well, no, it will give an error because we don't have answer table, okay? And we also need to export answer because otherwise app.js cannot import. And here we can do, instead of named, hmm, just to, to use a, a named export that is like this, a list of name export. Hmm. If we have other things to export, we can say answer, comma, and then exporting other things. Hmm. So. Before it was the default answer, this is a list of, answer, of exports. Mm -hmm. Just to see another, another item, another way to do it. And in app, we already imported answer. So. Now we need to create answer table as a component. So function, answer table, that we receive some props because they are the answers. And we said that uh, return. And we said that we want, uh, well, what we need here, a table. That in React Bootstrap is a table. Uh, we can have it stripped. So with the lines, one gray with the background and one white. Uh, then we can have the table head because that is static. It's, it's not really reusable, the table head, because it's actually for this specific table. So T, like in HTML, uh, T head, and then TH, and one was uh, date. And you see, this is, again, declarative. You declare what you want to do. Uh, text. Um, author. Score. And actions. And then we need a t-body. And here we need an answer row, or better, one answer row for each answer in the object that we passed in the props, right? 
So how can we create one answer row for each object passed in the props? With a for loop or mm, a function that fills the table or yes, we need to iterate on the props, right? So we have the props that is props dot answer so. So since this is functional, what we uh, can do? No spread operator, not for each. We also need to set a key that is different. So we can use a for each was in the right direction, but it's not a map. Yes. A map that for each uh, answer that for each answer um, give us Yes, in parentheses, because it's an expression. It's a JavaScript expression, so it should be in a map that for each answer getting from the map will create an answer row uh, which two attributes. One is what we need to pass to the row so that the row can render itself. We are iterating on all the answers and for each answer we are creating a row. So which is the things that we need to pass to the row so that the row can put the content within it? The answer. The answer. So the first attribute could be uh, answer, the single answer that is answer, hmm? this uh, parameter here and then we need to pass also define not pass a key because this is a list of things rows mm -hmm. and what is the key what could be a key yeah, the ID the answer ID because the answer add an ID good and now we can create so you you understand the game and now we can create the function that is answer row that will receive a props because it's the answer and we'll need to return something and it will return we said one component for everything except the action and one component for the action so it could be return two components but for um, since we have 10 minutes, just, let's just avoid the action for now. Let's just return the data of the table. So uh, we can say that it return a um, TR with inside the TD for each element. Hmm? So the first one was the date. So what we're writing here to report a date. What is the date of the single answer stored in this function? In, props. in the props. And now it's called the props that contain the single answer? Answer. The, the one that you define here. If you write here whatever, the props will be called whatever. Answer. And this answer is the object answer you created in the file, in the other file. So the date is stored in a field that's called date. And since it's a date.js object, you can also format it in the format here, 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 
month, month, date, date, like you did um, before. <coughs> and then we need another TD with props.answer.text and then with um, the author that was called the name, if I remember correctly, and the score that was called score. And then the actions, that let's put it to do, just to remember that there is something more there. Hmm? Okay, so let's see if this is working. It's not. Uh, call is not defined, clearly. So we need to import a few things. So row, call, table. Mm, hopefully nothing else because tbed, tbody, td so are, are default things. Okay, and th cannot appear as a child of the head. Why not? Um, Oh, because there is a TR missing, probably. Yes, there is. Clearly, it's TED, then TR, and then all the TH. Okay, no errors. Uh, so the table is correct one, why it's in the middle of the page. You shouldn't. Because I told you that there is index CSS that is defining some style and it's imported in main JSX from here. So if we just delete the import or empty the file and go in the right browser, you see that the table is in the right position and with the right content. Clearly, the action needs to be done and etc. but it missed a higher container that will set up the columns, etc. but the main thing is here. So if you, if you want to continue, the navbar could be structured in this way, it could be in another file, or it could be in the same app.jsx, since it's not very, very long. And same things for the question, could be a separate question component or within the uh, app.js directly, hmm? okay? So I, I will put all, all of these online and I will also put you uh, online up uh, on GitHub uh, the complete version with the nav bar, etc, etc later today so that you also have the full, the full example. But clearly the table was the most complicated things to, to do because it has rows, it has columns, etc, etc, etc. OK, so we, we pick information from locally and we use it to render a page and you notice that last time when I deleted the CSS I didn't have to refresh the page because it's Vite that automatically refresh refresh this okay if you have any questions I'm still here for 10 minutes otherwise we don't have lab this week clearly because holiday and we will have lecture next Thursday instead of the lab hmm? to continue on the basic things on react before doing uh, labs because otherwise the lab will be create a rect project like this and create a few components and that's it so we will do three hours of lecture next thursday in whatever class we are uh, so all groups together since 8 30 for three hours have a nice vacation if you do vacations uh, have a nice easter if you celebrate easter and see you next thursday <laughs>